بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله It's important for us to understand and realize the ni'ma of Islam, the, the, the great, great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has blessed us with, and that is Islam in general. And when we see the lives, if really we reflect on our lives, but also in comparison to the lives of so many, so many people who live in the darkness and shade of kufr and disbelief that that can be a means for us to realize the ni'am that Allah has given us Allah has favored us with so much because when you see how some people live and the way they think their whole thought process is 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 dark and in fact really full of grief and hardship that the Muslim if he or she takes a minute to really reflect on their lives then they will see how in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have saved them from so much because if you have the darkness of, of kufr on top of that, on top of that kufr, a spiritual void. So I'm going to make a distinguish that we have to distinguish these things and that I'm not just talking about kufr because people receive spiritual strength from different sources. Although it is not like iman. It doesn't enter them in the fold of Islam. But however, this can help people when they have a belief system. When they believe in at least the rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a source of strength for them. But the one who doesn't really believe in Allah at all and doesn't have any type of strong moral foundation and belief system, then they are even in a darker, darker place. Because the trials and tribulations of life, we all have to deal with. We all struggle. But the one who has Iman to be able to deal with those trials and tribulations, that they have tools, they have a means, they have a way in order to navigate through the darkness, through the trials of life. And that true navigation, the best navigation, because as I said, people with other faiths, they have uh, tools of navigation at least, even if it is not the navigation that's gonna get you to paradise. But it's navigation that can help them in life, obviously, to give them a sort of strength, to give them a motivation to live, a motivation to strive. But when you don't have any of that, it's just from darkness to darkness. And if you see how some of the people live who are just in pure darkness with no form of guidance, no form of direction, no Iman, then you see that they don't have any real tools to navigate them through this dunya, through the trials and tribulations, so that they will look for dark solutions. And I'm thinking about, in, in practical sense, women who are just, they only found, find their value through their akramakum Allah, through their beauty or, or what have you, or in their relationship on how they entice men. Or men 
who only find their value through uh, wealth, how much they possess. And if they don't possess much, they feel no value. And they only see life in those terms. But the mu'min and the mu'mina, they understand that there's so much more to this life than that. And they understand that they have to prioritize their iman, prioritize the halal, be patient in, uh, on, uh, with, with ta'atillah, being patient in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And being patient, being patient with the ma'asiyatillah, meaning that they are patient by not committing, by avoiding the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And being patient with the Iqdarillah, with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those various levels of maratiba sabr, those various levels, or there's various ways of patience. Ibn al-Qayyum details this extensively. And what recently came into mind, a, a, a brother, a beloved brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him, our brother, Amin Abdul Latif, or Abdul Latif Amin, one of my colleagues, my former colleagues, I just found out he died, Allah yarhamhu, and, 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 and bless him with Jannatul Fardos, I mean, from the COVID-19, that he was a casualty of it. And this brought me great sadness and also made me realize again to wake up, leave sins, strive to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strive to do good and to go back to those levels of sabr. And that to realize that all of us have that, he, he just beat us. He beat us to the graves. And all of us have an appointment. And it also made me reflect when I heard the news on something very important. The hadith of the Prophet Salahi wa alayhi wa sallam and what she said Ida Mata al Mari in Kata in Kata Amalahu Ilamin Thalath that when a person dies that their their deeds cease except three. The deeds cease except three. Asadaka jariya. Al ilm yuntafa'bi. Wa waladin salih yad'uluhu. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when a person dies, their deeds cease except three. He said, Asadha Kajariya, the continuous charity. Knowledge that the people benefit from. Or that is benefited from. And a righteous child that supplicates for the one who deceased. So that made me think, after hearing Amin, hearing about his passing, Allah Yarhamahu about that hadith and that we should strive to leave behind good we should strive to leave behind <clears throat> those something from those deeds if not all three if we can so those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored to go seek knowledge or those people who Allah ta'ala has favored with wealth 
should spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave something for their akhirah by doing the sadaqah jariyah, the continuous charity by building wells, by building masajid, by building learning centers to, 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 to do talab al-ilm, to, by building ben, uh, buildings that the people will benefit from after they have gone. You know, things that will be a continuous charity and a continuous, continual source of good for the people. And the one who is favored with wealth and knowledge, they can really leave behind so much khair. And it, it, it calls to mind uh, the many stories we hear about uh, ulama in, in this contemporary time. Especially we've heard so much about Bin Baz, Imam Bin Baz, because he used to receive a lot of wealth for his, his services. Uh, and he would donate so much of it. And the stories we hear that he just would not, any person who approached him with a righteous Islamic cause, he, his, his hand, he probably was unaware how much money he was given. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, the one whose who's right hand, uh, you know, the, the hand that is spending is greater, uh, that they're, they're unaware of it with the, with the other hand. Meaning that they're unaware of how much they're spending because they're spending so much in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are some of the stories that we hear about Imam bin Baz. And I've known plenty, uh, plenty of people who are favored to meet him and actually receive favors from him. You know, a, a brother who came to Saudi Arabia, didn't have much. He was able to get in the presence of bin Baz. And that was it, the... The cause for him to study in the Islamic University of Medina and graduate, being an early graduate, graduate from uh, America. So, this is something alim. And just think about the ilm that he's left behind. You know, how many shuruhat, you know, explanations of books, uh, divine text, do we benefit from, from that imam and are benefit from? Meaning that they're still producing material from his tapes and producing it in book form. Look at Imam bin Uthaymeen. Look at Imam al-Albani. Or Imam Muqbil. And so many prior to them. Look at Imam al-Sa'di. Uh, these are just some of the contemporary. We, we haven't even spoke about great Imams of the Sunnah. Like Imam al-Nawawi, Imam Ibn Hajr. Uh, and, and then the, the four Imams. And all of that. And, and then think about the ilm. Yuntaf Abi. How many people benefit from their knowledge? And... The last type of sadaqah that the, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, he said, A walad in salih yad'uluhu. A righteous child that supplicates for him. You know, a righteous son or a righteous child. We know that that's the, the meaning, that it's not favored a, a boy over a girl. But the... The point is, is to have, is that your children love you. You want to be loved by your children. So establishing good conduct and ties and nurturing your children, even if you're not with them, meaning you've separated for whatever reasons, uh, or they've become grown, you want to keep those ties so that they, hopefully they have a good, positive view of you hopefully they love you and that they will be of those who will help to carry your legacy after you pass because that's an appointment all of us will have we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil protect us from the evil of ourselves and bless us to die in a state of Islam and a state of Iman strong Iman May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for what do we do during the days and the nights. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and, and accept our good deeds that we do during this time and forgive our, our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.